going to have some fun today uh, with animals, with calves. As you can see, we've got some calf hutches tipped up there, and that one's out of the way, and the wires moved back. Uh, we just, I guess, moved a few of them um, in with the rest of the steers in the barn. Larry and Peter um, are with the rest of the group. We still have to castrate them, unfortunately. And there's no calves back in the Hillbilly Calf Motel back there, which I greatly despise that we did that. Um, I guess it's going to be a mess to clean up come spring whenever it dries out. It's not cleaning up right now, and it's pretty deep back there. So I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of laying out the calf hutches, what we bed with, and our system. Welcome to a little hut. Um, this hut has been used already, but we have one calf who uh, is still in the bottle. So we're going to keep him in his hutch. We haven't moved him in with the rest of the calves yet. He's still in, uh, it sounds bad to say isolation, um, package, apartment, whatever. However, this is, uh, kind of what keeps him from spreading disease. I had found myself at a farm where the guy is a, a calf trader. I absolutely despise calf traders. I'm sorry. If that's you and you're watching this, just had bad luck and somebody made a bad name for you. Um, well, he's getting his own calf hutch back. And those ones were used, we're going to put those in the sanitation row. And I guess I can reuse this wire over here. But I found myself in the presence of a calf trader on their farm, sort of on accident. I uh, bought some new chickens, which I got to show you guys that. Um, right now the chickens are kind of uh, in their, uh, oh, I don't want to say isolation, but not confinement. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're being monitored. Since they're new here, they are separate from the rest of the chickens out on mud at the moment. That's what we have. Mud, 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 and rain. I'll trade somebody. Anybody who doesn't have rain, I'll trade you. Now well, we could move this one a little farther to the edge. We orient these things. You see our pad. We turn them at a 45 degree angle almost. Right now, the afternoon sun is cutting across. It's almost 3. But so in the morning, the sun rises in the east, they get the sun coming straight in their hutch uh, to warm them up after a cool night. And the, this way, they're oriented away from most of the prevailing weather. Winds blow from over there, and over this, generally that direction. Maybe a little bit from where the sun is towards the south every once in a while, it's it real weird. <clears throat> oh yeah, so back to this uh, fellow uh, it was a calf trader. That's a nice clean one. Ooh, they air holes. It's not too cold for that yet. Yeah, they're sure they're full of water, but they've had sun and rain washing down inside of them. Hopefully clean them out. It's kind of sunlight, nature sanitizing agent. Dump the water out. Flood this area. That's lovely. So yeah, yes, this, I have a question that kind of correlates with this calf trader character. He says, oh, everybody has good luck with his calves. But what does he tell them to do? He tells them to make sure they give them a shot of this and a nose spray of that, which I really, oh, that was lovely. Thank you, water. Really didn't care to remember. Really didn't care at all. That's one thing we don't do, never have to do. No shots, no injections. No money dump like that. And if you gotta from the get go start dumping money into medications and things that aren't feed, well, in this market, you're not gonna make much money. Especially when they're all hosting calves. Anyway. So I didn't buy that. When he said, yeah, he tells everybody to make sure they get their shot and injection of this and that crap. I was like, you already lost me when you told me you were trading calves. So, and he was lucky I still wanted to buy chickens, which I shouldn't have done that. The chickens look like crap. At least they're laying. Um, which I guess I'll throw in a quick view of the chickens and get that out of the way. Ready for another hut, Shiloh? Let's see if we can make another big mess. Whew! Uh, 
Now some of these we did cut vents in, but only being the first of March, didn't think we needed too many vents. Once it starts getting into May, April, then I'll think about it, using those. Okay, 45, a little bit of space to walk. I guess we move it over a little bit. Okay. I don't know. I've thought about power washing these out, but I haven't. <clears throat> Usually that's not the big issue. As long as they go at least a month or more without being used two back to back, they do pretty well. Ready, Shiloh? Woo! Yeehaw, yeah buddy. Big mess. Not quite the right time of year for the water park. We find anything good, Shiloh? Huh? For the longest time he had an ear infection. We were trying to fight ourselves. We finally took him to the vet. Holy cow, he feels so much better. He's been getting his nose into everything and to be fair, He's not the youngest dog anymore. I came to realize he's almost 10 at least. At least what previous owners have told me. Last set of wires. If you like our pastel colors, unfortunately, this designer look isn't available anymore. Uh, we got the wires when uh, Babies R Us went out of business and kind of joined with Kids R Us to make one store. And these were what they held their hangers on the walls. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. One row of calf hutches already for calves. Not yet, we need bedding. So what do we use for bedding? Right now, we've got leftover wood pellets. Oh geez, expanded wood pellets. They've gotten a little damp. These are at least two years old or more, or just really poorly stored, depending upon where we found them. Uh, but obviously wood fiber, super absorbent, you see how much it expands. We still have plenty of absorbency left. It does a lot better than straw. It makes cleanup of the hutches real nice and easy, because straw and other fibrous plant materials are rather, well, they just get woven together. Whereas this stuff just crumbles apart. I hate when we can't use these wood pellets, because then that's, you know, stuff we can't eat the house with. Uh, but I think we got an incredible deal on these pellets in general, not just these bad bags. I hate having bad bags, that was just a kind of a mutual understanding with the company selling them. But they were old and they'd have issues. So we repurposed them. Sometimes we'll use corn shucks. Um, which that's just a byproduct of sorting the ear corn. Still got plenty of ear corn left to sell, which is good. I guess I got more in storage. Or bad if I haven't been selling this fast, but I have more in storage. Oh, this is a nice bag. These are still super absorbent. That last one was really nasty and expanded. This one's still got a lot of, you know, pellet chunks that are still together. Tell me how they put their turning blue. <clears throat> well, I guess I'll go ahead and throw this tidbit while I'm on that rant. Oh, I guess a little bit of a rant about the um, uh, yeah, animal trader I came in contact with. Now, what was I told when these guys were for sale? Free range hens. And I eventually extracted out of them that they were commercial laying birds, which I kind of figured that. No one's going to have true pasture raised chickens in any stage of life most likely for three bucks a piece that's also kind of a quantity price I bought a hundred hopefully you can hear me over them squawking uh, but we'll take a look at one of them up close she's one of the better ones only missing a few feathers how are you doing over here you're not too bad now keep in mind I've had them here a week so free range, I figured, you know, commercial birds, they're like how I have them now. They're inside, but free ranging inside. I have yet to let them outdoors because I'm still trying to acclimate them to farm life. 
Um, so they've taken to my feed. I've been giving them milk, which I need to do a video about the chickens getting milk and that whole story. Uh, but some of these girls over here are a bit rough. Now, if we can get a close-up view, oh, well, her beak has been clipped, and then her beak grew very deformed, but yours is the more typical, where the, where the tip, tip of their beak's been trimmed. And I expected that. Most of them, these are, the only thing I gotta say, the good thing is that, other than the one with the crooked beak, they've all came out very unnoticeable because i got some like this that were former commercial birds and they had just absolutely horrendous trimmed beaks okay so back to the free range thing there's no way they were free ranged um i figured they're cage birds because their feathers didn't, are not picked off if they were picked off you'd see clipped feathers or they would be short pieces these nobody's going to cooperate like they've more been rubbed they've been in confinement in a battery cage which you know they, they probably have and the way they acted like just as a group they were somewhat i don't say awkward but they don't know how to fly only five of them use my perches at night and as, as you can see while i have a conglomeration of things to lay eggs in there's a bunch in this corner and they lay on the ground so they're not used to having a lot of free range creature amenities um, you know, but at least they're laying well. I will give them that much for as terrible shape as they look feather-wise, they're laying well. That's the end of my rant. Um, there's hopefully going to be a big chicken project coming up. Uh, we'll get to that when we get there. Well, how you doing, little buddy? So you had your bottle and it's nap time. Such a hard life being a calf. Did you have your bottle? You're probably forever hungry, aren't you? Yes, you are. Well, uh, we have... These are the calves. Dad got back after dark last night. And so I wasn't going to shoot video in the dark. And they've had their bottle this morning. Apparently some of these guys are a bit more than a week old. This guy acts like it because he is hungry all the time. You're enjoying nap time in the sun. And oh, when we thought we were only supposed to get um, three calves, we got four. How you doing? Oh, soft ears. That's the best part, soft ears. So yep, four new little Holstein calves. Moo. I guess we'll uh, you know wrap it up for our calf hutch setup. We'll slowly throw in more bedding. I mean it's still dry, but if you throw it all in at once, it seems like the top layer will get wet and dirty, and underneath there'll still be like dry sections without actually going in there and turning it over. So we slowly layer it in. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. 